بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم After defeating Jalut, Dawud السلام, eventually becomes the king of Bani Israel and of that land. وقتل داود جالوت وآتاه الله الملك والحكمة وعلمه مما يشاء. Some sources mention that Talut changed his mind about passing on the kingdom to Dawud السلام, and that he wanted to keep it for his own sons. Some mention a power struggle between him and Dawud السلام. However, it is difficult to rely on these sources. Especially when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised Talut on the words of Shamwil alayhi salam, Inna Allah astafahu alaykum wa zadahu bastatan fil ilmi wal jism. Allah has chosen him over you, meaning over the rest of Bani Israel. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen him, Allah had given him the strength, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also had given him knowledge, then the logical conclusion is that this person would be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guided by that knowledge and he would do the right thing. In fact, it's safe to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had brought Talut as someone who brought things under order and organized Bani Israel in preparation for Dawud alayhi salam to become the king. And as Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Dawud alayhi salam that kingdom. And he gave him wisdom and taught him from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach him. So Dawud alayhi salam now becomes the first prophet who is also a king. He was from the lineage of Yehuda or Judah. And previously, the kingdom would be through one bloodline and prophethood would be through a, another bloodline and now they were united in one person. There is a great deal about Dawud in the Quran and also in the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our focus in this series is primarily about the land of Al-Aqsa, the land of Al-Quds. So we are more concerned with what efforts Dawud made for that land, for those people, and what he did in his capacity as a ruler of, uh, of Al-Quds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Dawud salam the directive to be the judge and to establish justice. Ya Dawud, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna al-nas bil-haq, wa la tattabi'i al-hawa fayudillaka an sabilillah. O Dawud, we have made you a vicegerent in the world. We have made you a custodian of power in this world. So amongst your other responsibilities of, of ruling the people, looking after their needs, you also need to make decisions based on justice and fairness. So Dawud salam implemented a system of justice for those people. He was the ultimate judge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him rulership, wisdom, and also the ability to make final decisions, excellent final decisions. This is one tafsir of Faslul Khitab, where he would make a decision that would be decisive in the sense that it ended the dispute, it was based on fairness and justice, and it restored order to those people. There are some examples of this in the Qur'an as well. There is one incident about people who approached Dawud while he was busy in his worship. These were two people, they had a dispute, they were trying to access Dawud He was busy in his worship, in his place of worship at Al-Baytul Maqdis, at Baytul Maqdis, and they somehow managed to climb over the walls and enter. He was startled, and they said, لا تخف خصمان يبغى بعضنا على بعض We are just two disputants. One has oppressed or hurt the other. So he heard the case. 
The claimant said, إِنَّ هَذَا أَخِي لَهُ تِسْعُونَ وَتِسْعُونَ نَعْجَةً وَلِيَ نَعْجَةٌ وَاحِدًا فَقَالَ أَكْفِلْنِيهَا وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ This is my, my brother, my friend. He has 99 sheep. I only have one. فَقَالَ أَكْفِلْنِيهَا He says, give me the one that you have. And he has been very harsh with me in his manner of addressing me. وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ Dawood alayhi salam said, لَقَدْ ظَلَمَكَ بِسُؤَالِ نَعْجَتِكَ إِلَى نِعَاجِ He has been unfair to you by asking you to give up that one sheep that he has and instead of sufficing with the 99, he wants to take yours as well. This is unfair. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْخُلَطَاءِ لَيَبْغِي بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ And this happens amongst partners where one partner tries to usurp or take over the share of the other. Now at this point, there are many stories that are told about Dawood salam. Most of them are Israeliyat. There is no basis for them. And as per the rules of examining Israeliyat, meaning those narrations that have been passed down to us from Bani Israel, one principle is that if it coincides with something or it is affirmed by something, in our religious texts, in Quran, in Hadith, or through our the principles, the usul of our deen and our creed, then there is no harm in taking them. وَحَدِّثُ عَنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَلَا حَرَجْ These are the riwayat about which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you can narrate uh, these narrations of Bani Israel. Then there are those which are in direct contradiction with something in Quran or in Hadith, or it contradicts with one of the principles of deen. So about these, we are not to relate them and we are not to believe in them. One of the principles of deen is that the Anbiya والسلام, are ma'asum. They are not capable of committing any major sin. So these Israeliyat regarding this particular incident where they say that Dawud salam was interested in a woman, he wanted to marry her, so he sent off her husband into battle. He came back victorious. He sent her. He, he sent him again, and like this numerous times until that man was killed. And then Dawud alayhi salam married his wife, and Allah subhanahu wa taala was admonishing Dawud alayhi salam because he already had so many wives, and he wanted this person's wife as well. This is absolutely incorrect and uh, and baseless, and we cannot accept it by virtue of our belief in the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about those prophets. So Dawood alayhi salam is amongst those regarding whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said he is from the muhsineen wa kathalika najzil muhsineen counting the prophets that were from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salam. Wa min dhurriyatihi Dawood wa Suleyman wa Ayyuba wa Yusuf wa Musa wa Harun wa kathalika najzil muhsineen. And he is amongst those prophets about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has said those are the people that Allah has guided and you should follow their guidance. So this is one clear example that these Anbiya were not misguided. Dawud is amongst them. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about knowledge and wisdom of Dawud He speaks of the piety of Dawud and all of his achievements, all of his accomplishments. So these narrations come into direct contradiction with all of that material. Therefore, we do not accept them. What some Mufassireen have said is that it is possible that Dawud salam wanted to marry that woman or he wished that he could marry that woman if she was halal for him at that time. This is the most that could be said about that occasion. Why is this an important discussion? We are talking about Dawud in the capacity of a ruler and of a judge. So these types of statements or these types of narrations, they, they undermine his status of being the one who restored justice, of the fair ruler, the one who crushed out tyranny. It's mentioned in the books of Tafsir that this was a time in which unfairness, false testimony and Falsification of evidence had become very, very common. Dawood salam put an end to all of that under his rule and through his teachings. Now we also know that Dawood salam was 
granted the Zabur, the Psalms. He used to recite those Psalms and he would convey the teachings of those Psalms. So between power and knowledge and wisdom, all of which was coming through divine revelation, Dawud salam established an orderly and just way of living and resolved disputes and he increased the knowledge of the people. Now this is aside from all of the other miraculous abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had given him. For example, inna sakharna al-jibala yusabbihna ma'ahu wa tayr wa alanna lahu al-hadid the, when Dawud would recite the Zabur or when he would do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the mountains would do dhikr with him. The birds would join him in their dhikr. Some narrations mention that when he would recite the Zabur, all the birds and all the animals would crowd around, stop whatever it was that they were doing and just listen to him for hours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made iron soft for him. Alanna lahul hadid. And what would he do with this? He was the first person who created armor, who built armor out of chain mail. Before that, it was the steel plates that were used. So he actually created mail. And the hadith mentions that he would make one of those in, in a day. Narrations mention that he did not need fire, he did not heat, did not require heat to, to soften the metal. Rather, he was able to just bend it with his fingers. And the Prophet wasallam has told us about Dawud that كَانَ لَا يَأْكُلُ إِلَّا مِنْ عَمَلِ يدي. He would make that armor, he would sell it, and that's what he would use to sustain himself and his family. Just like Nabi wasallam has praised the worship of Dawud He tells us that the most beloved Siyam is the Siyam of Dawood. The most beloved fast is the fast of Dawood. What was the fast of Dawood alayhi salam? He would fast one day and break fast one day. So he would eat one day, the next day he would fast. And the best Salah, meaning the Salat of night, is the Salat of Dawood alayhi salam. He would sleep for half the night, then get up and worship for one third of the night, then rest for one sixth of the night. Like this, he had divided his time. وَكَانَ لَا يَفِرُّ إِذَا لَاقَ He did this while maintaining his physical strength. When he went into battle, he would not need to turn his back. He did not become weak physically because of these worships. So Allah SWT had given him a great deal of strength. So Dawud rules for a significant period of time. The hadiths of Musnad Ahmad and others tell us that he lived for a hundred years. How do we know this? Adam salam, when he saw his progeny, he saw one of them with this radiant, shining face. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that this is Dawood salam. So he asked, how long is he going to live? So it was revealed to Adam salam that he's going to live for 60 years. So Allah subhanahu wa Adam salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that increase his age by 40 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I can only give him 40 years if you give that out of your life. So Adam alayhi salam lived for a thousand years according to that narration and so he gifted 40 years of that to Dawood alayhi salam and with 40 years remaining still as per his original uh, idea, his original understanding when the angel of death came to take Adam alayhi salam, he said, I still have 40 years. They said, you forgot, you've given that to Dawood alayhi salam. So that tells us that Dawood alayhi salam lived for 100 years, 60 plus the 40 that he got from Adam alayhi salam's life. How long exactly did he, did he rule from that period? Well, there are two views to this. One view says that he ruled for 40 years. And the other view is that he ruled for much longer than that because he was granted kingdom as a young man. Others say he did not become king as a young man. Talud continued to rule until he died. And then after that, Dawud became king. 